So, so far we have discussed about Faraday's law in electromagnetic induction. The Faraday's law in electromagnetic states the induced VMF, the magnitude of the induced VMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the conductor or a coil or a loop. And in that discussion, in the last section, I told that the induced EMF, the magnitude of the induced EMF is given by Faraday's law. But the polarity of the EMF or you can say in a closed circuit, if the circuit is closed, the induced EMF gives us or the induced EMF develop a induced current in the closed circuit. The EMF will give a current or it gives the or the effect is a current. The current is called induced current. So the induced current is developed in the circuit. So the polarity of the induced EMF or you can say the direction of the induced current in the closed circuit is given by Lenz law. Is given by Lenz law. So by using that Lenz law, the Faraday's law is mathematically the Faraday's law mathematically we can write in another way or in a some modification. So first we will go to the Lenz law. Lenz law. What this law states? The law gives us the polarity of the EMF or the direction of the induced current in the closed circuit. When a flux change with the coil or the loop or the conductor. Okay? So the law first that what the law states the polarity of induced EMF the law states the law states the law states that the polarity of induced EMF or the polarity of induced EMF or the direction of or you can say the direction of induced current in the closed circuit in the closed circuit in the closed circuit is is such that is such that it opposes the it opposes the it opposes the cause that produces it it opposes the cause that produces it now let let us understand this thing the polarity of the induced EMF or the direction of the induced current because the EMF will give you the current in the closed circuit is such that it opposes the cause that produces it. The cause that produces it. Okay. So let, let us understand the thing is that suppose this is the current getting loop and the galvanometer is connected like this. This is the loop. And let there is a bar magnet with its north pole and south pole. But both are at rest. There is no relative motion. There is no current induced in the coil. That already you know that in Faraday's and Henry experiment. 
But when the north pole of the bar magnet moves towards the coil, when the north pole of the bar magnet moves towards the coil, then an EMF is induced in the coil, and if it is a closed circuit, the induced EMF gives you the current. So what is the polarity of the induced EMF, or you can say that the direction of the induced current is such that is such that it opposes the cause that produces it. Means what? Because of the magnet moves towards the coil, which is not for facing towards the coil, moves towards the coil, a magnetic flux linked with the coil changes. That magnetic flux linked with the coil changes, and that change is opposed by the coil. The linked magnetic flux is opposed by the coil such that it develops a current in the coil which will oppose that flux, the change in flux. Means if the flux is increasing, the current so induced that it will always try to make it a or it is a decreasing, it decreases. If the coil is moving away from the coil, if, sorry, if the bar magnet is moving away from the coil, the current is so induced that it, because the magnet moves away means the flux link with the coil decreases, so it will try to increase that. That is the lens. So what you can see here that you see, when the north pole of the bar magnet moves towards the coil, the current so induced that, that the north pole is moving towards this means so the flux is increasing. So it tries to decrease the flux. To decrease the flux, what it should do? A north polarity will develop. A north polarity will develop in the coil. North polarity. What it means north polarity? A current carrying coil or a loop behaves like as a magnetic dipole. In that sense, the current in the face in a coil, I am recalling the point, the coil current carrying coil behaves as a magnetic dipole and if we observe the coil, if we observe the coil, the face from the coil, the face from the coil, where the current flows in anti-clockwise direction that gives you the north polarity and the face from which it gives the, from the face in which the current is clockwise, it gives you the south polarity. Clear? The current, a current carrying coil, BFC is a magnetic dipole, means it has a north pole and south pole. So for the current is flowing like this, from this side, if you see, the current is supposed flowing like this, it is clockwise, then it is a south polarity. If you see from this side, the same current looks like your anti-clockwise, and it will show you a north polarity. <coughs> So in this case, the current should flow in anti-clockwise like this. So this is the current flows in the coil like this. The induced current will be like this, so that it will oppose the cause because the north and north pole are here, or the north and north pole will ripple because the moving coil is moving towards this. Is that clear? So when the north pole comes towards the coil. The current will flow in a anti clockwise. Okay. Now the same thing is in this case, if the north pole of the bar magnet is moving away from the coil, then the flux link with the coil decreases. So it will develop a current so that it will behave like a south pole. This face which is facing toward the bar magnet should be a south pole. So to make the south pole, what it will do? The direction of the current should be clockwise. For the Bar magnet with its north pole, north pole facing towards the coil. On what side of the coil that is facing to this one? That is the okay. means the coil is not like this. The coil is like this. So if the north pole of the bar magnet will be away from this one, the current will be in the clockwise direction. So if it is clockwise for this north pole, this looks like what south. So there will be a attractive force. Means it opposes. It is decreasing means it is coming to us. If it is coming to us, it is opposing. By the way, a north pole. So this is also true for south pole and north pole. Suppose you take the south pole this side and the north pole. If the south pole is moving towards this, 
means it will develop a if the south pole is moving toward this means it is oppose this one coming toward this coil means it is opposed to oppose this what it will do it will develop a south pole and the current will be like this clockwise and if the south pole is going away it will develop a north pole so that it will attract and the current flow will be anti clockwise so it will show a north polarity so this is your lens law so that means if you write the faraday's law according to this lens law so mathematically if you write this one so that is what you can write so you can write from faraday's law from faraday's law from faraday's law the magnitude of the emf is equal to if n number of turns n d phi by dt rate of change of magnetic flux but according to lenz law according to lenz law lenz law this emf because you are taking the polarity direction this emf is equal to minus n d phi by dt why this negative sign because the induced emf is opposite to the change in or oppose the change in magnetic flux okay Oppose the change in magnetic flux. So you can write the negative sign is due to the negative sign is due to the induced EMF. The induced EMF opposes opposes the change in magnetic flux. The change in magnetic flux. That is the Lenz law, and this is the statement. Right? This is a two-month process. Take Lenz law, and you write this one with the negative sign. The negative sign is due to the induced EMF, or you can say induced current is opposite to the change in magnetic flux, or opposes the change in magnetic flux. Next, this Lenz law. Another thing is that this Lenz law is. in accordance to the law of conservation of energy this is very very important to remember the lenz law is in accordance to this law is in accordance to this law in accordance to the law of conservation of energy law of conservation of energy what is this law of conservation of energy energy can neither be created nor destroyed it can only transfer from one form to another form what happens here you see now think the simple example that simple uh, that let us consider this is a coil it has no current no current is flowing in that coil but as you see when a bar magnet is moving towards the coil or away from the coil if the bar magnet is moving towards the coil or away from the coil a emf is induced and that gives a induced current and that gives a induced current so where this induced current comes so that this induced current will oppose the change in flux this induced current or induced emf oppose the change in flux so where this current comes in the coil that is given by is according to the law of conservation of energy what that now you see here when the bar magnet is at rest and this is the case then the bar magnet starts moving towards the coil if this is the north pole of the bar magnet so what happens in the according to lenz law when the bar magnet moving towards the coil this side will develop what this side for the north pole it will develop a North polarity because it will repel because the bar magnet is moving it opposes the repel. So when it repels, then there is a repulsive force between this north pole and the north polarity of the current carrying loop. So there is a repulsive force. So to overcome this repulsive force, what has to be do? What has to be done? Some work has to be done to overcome the repulsive force. and that work done mechanical work done converts to electrical energy to overcome the repulsive force 
some external work or the mechanical work is done to move the magnet towards the coil because there is a north polarity already developed it opposes but if you tries to move the north pole of the bar magnet towards the coil in that case what will happen here when you move the bar magnet towards the coil then it there is a repulsive force to overcome this repulsive force we have to do work that is the mechanical work the mechanical work converts to electrical energy electric current okay so you can say the mechanical work the mechanical work mechanical work or that is the mechanical energy mechanical work to move the bar magnet to move the bar magnet towards or away from the coil towards or or away from the coil the mechanical work to move the bar magnet towards or away from the coil converts to electrical energy current converts to electrical energy same procedure like that then the north pole of the bar magnet is moving away when the north pole of the bar magnet is moving away from the coil then what will develop here south pole so if there is a south pole because of the north pole this south pole will attract the north pole there is a attractive force but we are moving the bar magnet away from the away from the coil work has to be done this work mechanical work to move away from the coil that converts to electrical energy so this lens law is in accordance to the law of conservation of energy this is very very important remember this thing that the mechanical work to move the bar magnet towards or away from the coil converts to electrical energy okay next then we will go to the other part is that the magnetic so in this total in this total discussion what we say that in this case the magnetic flux link with the closed loop increases current in the loop is a anti clockwise current in the loop is a anti clockwise yes or no because according to the lens law opposes and if the magnetic flux link with the closed loop decreases if the magnetic flux link with the loop decreases goes away from the coil then the current in the loop is a clockwise okay so this is about your lens law and the lens law is in accordance to the law of conservation of energy clear so this is about your lens law and the law of conservation of energy then next is the the methods of producing induced emf what are the methods of producing methods of producing induced emf what are the methods of producing induced emf what are the methods of producing the induced emf the different methods means you see here the even according to faraday's law according to faraday's law according to faraday's law according to faraday's law the induced emf is equal to minus n d phi by dt and n is the number of turns in the coil so this is the one factor or i can write this is equal to e is equal to minus n d by dt what is my magnetic flux flux is equal to magnetic field into area or you can write b a cos theta so you can write b a cos theta in place of this phi so the induced emf can be changed by changing the strength of magnetic field area of the coil and the orientation of the coil theta theta is the angle between the magnetic field and area vector magnetic field and area vector by changing these factors we can change the induced emf so one of the is the magnetic flux can be changed by so you can say the emf the induced emf can be changed 
can be changed by changing the magnetic flux linked with the coil linked with the coil okay so we can change this by changing the the induced wave can be changed by changing the magnetic flux linked with the coil by changing the magnetic flux linked with the coil okay so magnetic flux can be changed by what are the methods the induced wave the magnetic flux can be changed by what are the factors one magnetic flux can be changed or the emf can be changed in you say magnetic flux can be changed can be changed by one changing the strength of magnetic field changing the strength of magnetic field means what this be if the magnetic field strength changes then the induced wave also changes okay so if the when the magnet is moved towards the coil the strength of the magnetic field at any point of the coil increases at any point of the coil increases yes or no then the magnet moves towards the coil the magnetic flux is moved towards the coil the strength of the magnetic field at any point of the coil increases and the more magnetic field lines will pass through the coil magnetic field strength increases means what when the coil when the magnet moves towards the coil more number of magnetic lines of force or magnetic lines of force pass through the coil so the galvanometer deflection indicates that the galvanometer shows the indication that there is a current induced in the coil and or when the bar magnet is moved away from the coil otherwise the bar magnet is moved away from the coil then the magnetic field lines linked with the coil decreases the strength of the magnetic field linked with the coil decreases so the galvanometer shows a their deflection then the, the, so that the galvanometer shows a deflection so it means what by changing the strength that the simple thing by changing the strength means uh, if you move the bar magnet towards the coil or away from the coil the magnetic field lines linked with the coil changes or increases or decreases so the strength of the magnetic field at any point in the coil changes so accordingly the emf is uh, induced the flux changes so the rate of change of flux gives to the induced emf that is the number 1 but the number 2 is by changing the area by changing the induced emf by changing the area number 2 so that is a question that is a three mark question number 2 factor is the area okay we will discuss one by one next is the area the second one is the area so the second method is the induced emf by changing the induced emf induced induce the emf by changing the area induce the emf by changing the area by changing the area or that is also the that is also called as a mosner emf induce the emf by changing the area or that is also called as a mosner emf okay we will discuss this one how the by changing the area how we can the change the or the emf is induced let us consider how we find out the mosnal emf or the induced emf by changing the area of the coil area of the or area of a coil that is called as a mosna emf let us consider a magnetic field uniform magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of the whiteboard inward so to show that uniform magnetic field inward let us consider a inward uniform magnetic field let it be so like this perpendicular inward by cross marks and this is a uniform magnetic field like this So there is a uniform magnetic 
फिर परपेंडिकुलर इनवर्ट टू द प्लेन टू दिस प्लेन ओके नाउ आई कैन आल्सो सो लाइक दिस सो दिस इज अ यूनिफॉर्म मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ओके दिस इज अ यूनिफॉर्म मैग्नेटिक फील्ड परपेंडिकुलर इनवर्ट टू द प्लेन ऑफ द व्हाइट बोर्ड और इन योर प्लेन ऑफ पेपर इट इज इनवर्ट ओके a rectangular coil think that there is a rectangular coil pqrs a rectangular coil think that this is a rectangular coil like this p q r s Is a rectangular coil. Let the side R S is of length L. This side is L, and this side is B. It is not equal here, so I take this as a L. This is a rectangular coil. And why you draw this one? The side R S, the side R S can slide, can slide. This end, this conductor is fixed. This side can be. Slide over. Slide means it can move, so that we can change the area. So that we can change the area. That is the meaning, right? So we can say that. So P Q R S is placed in the plane of the paper. This P Q R S is placed on this plane of the paper or in the whiteboard. Okay, in this whiteboard, the the side R S is movable along the. This side or along this side. Okay, so clear. This is the magnetic field, and the coil is placed like this, perpendicular inward, and the coil is placed on the plane of the paper or your whiteboard. Clear? Now, let the R S side is moves towards the right. R S is moves towards the right to a new position. Okay, the R S is moves towards the right to a new position like this. With a velocity b, and this R S now comes to this side. So both this is R S and S S because it's sliding, so it is moving with a velocity b. And the time taken to reach from R to R S, suppose that is your d p. The time taken is a d p. Then what is this R to R S? What is this R to R S? If it is the time taken is d p. Then what is the distance travelled by R to R S or S to S S with the speed v? Time taken is t. Then what is this value? That is your v d t speed velocity into time that will give you the displacement or the distance. So this is the v d t. So the distance R to R S is you can say that this is the v d t. Now here what happens you see? The point is that there is motional E M F or not C. Induced EMF by changing the area. EMF is induced by changing the magnetic flux. The magnetic flux can be changed by changing the area. Now I am changing the area. Initially the area is P Q R S. Now the area is P Q R S S S. P Q R S S S. The area. Now see here the area is changing or not. Initially this is the area. This is the magnetic flux link with this area. Now this is the area. Now the necessarily Obviously, the magnetic flux linked with P Q R S S S is more. So the magnetic flux linked with the coil, because of this, moving the or sliding the one of the R, the magnetic flux linked with the coil is changing. The magnetic flux linked with the coil changing by changing this area to this to this P Q R S changes to P Q R S S S. The magnetic flux linked with the coil. Changes if the magnetic flux linked with the coil changes. If I move goes on sliding like this with the velocity b in a time interval or in a time, then obviously the magnetic flux linked with the coil changes. If the magnetic flux linked with the coil changes with respect to time, that will give you induced EMF. That is the motional EMF that will be calculated. Clear? So if this is the case, so what is the increase in area? Now what is this increase in area? This portion. Increase in area. Increase in area. What is possible increase in area? That is, which area is increasing? 
area of area of r s s s r s s s r s increasing area b a how much is the area increasing b a is equal to length into breadth this is again a rectangular so this is l b d t l b d t that is the increasing area clear this is the increasing area clear na so b d t is this one and l is this length of the side which is movable right then if this is the increasing area then now the rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the coil rate of change of magnetic flux rate of change of magnetic flux rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the coil linked with the coil rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the coil d phi by dt rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the coil what is that d phi by dt that is equal to can write is equal to d by dt what is that flux so this is equal to b a flux is what cos theta but here b is uniform what is theta b is perpendicular in what what is the area vector of this one perpendicular to the plane containing this area the area is on this plane so its area vector is perpendicular in what or perpendicular outward so let that this perpendicular in what then a area vector area vector and the magnetic field what is the angle 0 degree so here theta is equal to 0 degree so you can write d phi by dt is equal to this is uniform constant outside the derivative da by dt then i can write this is equal to b what is da by dt b a is equal to l b dt by dt or this implies d phi by dt or d phi by dt is equal to this dt dt can cancel b l b b l b then the induced emf if the induced emf what is this induced emf according to faraday's law induced emf induced emf or n is equal to 1 number of terms is 1 induced emf n is equal to 1 for n is equal to 1 number of terms is suppose 1 this is one term induced emf p is equal to minus n n is 1 d phi by dt or e is equal to minus d phi by dt is what b l b is equal to b l minus b l b that is the induced emf that is this emf is also called as the motional emf because of the motion with velocity b because of this motion we are getting this emf what is the magnitude of emf magnitude of emf magnitude of emf is equal to b l b that is the magnitude and if r is the resistance magnitude of induced emf not emf magnitude of induced emf if r is the resistance of the coil Whole coil resistance is R. Then induced current. What is induced current? I is equal to induced EMF by resistance. B by R, E by R. So I is equal to E is what? B L B by R. This is also a formula. For induced current. Okay, and this induced current, what is this direction of this current, induced current, that can be known by Fleming's right hand rule. That is by Fleming's right hand rule. Okay, 
the direction of induced current is given by Frederick's right hand rule. The direction of, let me write, the direction of induced current induced current in a conductor the direction of induced current in a conductor is given by is given by Fleming's Fleming's right hand rule Fleming's right hand rule the direction of induced current in a conductor or a coil is given by a mixed right hand rule. What is the right hand rule? Stretch the first finger or fourth finger, middle finger and the thumb of the right hand in mutually perpendicular direction. In mutually perpendicular direction. Then the thumb, thumb points in the direction of thumb points shows the direction of motion of the conductor thumb let me write this here stretch the fourth finger middle finger and thumb of the right hand in mutually perpendicular in mutually perpendicular in mutually perpendicular to each other stretch the fourth finger, middle finger and thumb of the right hand in mutually perpendicular to each other if if the thumb remember if the thumb points in the direction of if the thumb points in the direction of motion of the conductor direction of motion of the conductor comma clear if the thumb points in the direction of the motion of the conductor four finger shows four finger shows four finger shows the direction of magnetic field the direction of magnetic field then the middle finger then the middle finger points middle finger points in the direction of induced current or EMF induced current clear let me repeat again in that thing if the thumb points in the direction of the motion of the conductor now see your figure in that figure let me draw again the figure so this is the magnetic field mutually perpendicular in one magnetic field uniform magnetic field mutually perpendicular in one that is your figure is there it is a uniform magnetic field which are mutually perpendicular in one this is the conductor here this is the coil pq r s close RS is moving in this direction with velocity B. And this is the direction of B, this is B. Then what is the direction of current? That is given by Fleming's right hand rule. Go to the right hand rule. This is the right hand rule. What it says? If the thumb points the direction of the motion of the conductor, now in the right hand, stretch they are mutually perpendicular. Thumb. This thumb gives you the direction of the Thumb is what? In, in what direction? In the right hand. The thumb in the direction of the motion of the conductor. Thumb along this direction. Motion of the conductor. Thumb points in the direction of the motion of the conductor. Four figures shows the direction of magnetic field. Four figures shows in the direction of magnetic field. 
perpendicular inward. This is the motion. So the in the conductor, this is the conductor. What is the direction of current along this direction? So the current direction is like this. This is the current. So the current flows in like this. The current flows like this. This is the case flow of current. This is the finger. Then the middle finger points in the direction of the induced current. This is according to the right hand rule. Clear? Magnetic field, thumb, speed, velocity, current. Okay? This is the Fleming's right hand rule. Okay? Then from here again we will go to a small topic. This is the how the emotional EMF or what is the derivation for emotional EMF. Okay? Next we will go to a small topic that generally a two mark or three mark question is generally asked. When a rod is rotating in a magnetic field and EMF is induced. Suppose, suppose this is a rod, one end is fixed at the center and the rod is rotating in a uniform magnetic field like this. With the angular speed omega, it is rotating like this. Then an EMF is induced in the coil, in the conductor and automatically that induced EMF will give you a induced Current. Okay, so that is your motional induced EMF in a conducting conducting rod rotating in a magnetic field. Okay, so next we will go to the next thing is that. Let me write motional induced EMF. And a special case of that one. Motional induced EMF. What you derive by changing the area? That is one of the cases. Motional induced EMF in a conducting rod, in a conducting rod, rod, in a conducting rod. Right? Motional induced EMF in a conducting rod rotated in magnetic field. Rotated, rotated in magnetic uniform magnetic field. Or this there is a Uniform magnetic field. Now derive the expression for this. Now what you take? Let, a, let let there is a uniform magnetic field perpendicular to the plane, perpendicular to this plane, and this source is a inward, and this source here inward. Okay, this is a magnetic field perpendicular inward to the plane of the seat or the board. Let us consider a rod, let us consider a rod, like this is a rod, PQ or OQ, PQ is the rod of length L, of length L, rotating in this magnetic field and this is rotating in this plane, on this plane. Okay, so when this is rotating means with this end is fixed, let this end is moving with an angular speed omega. It is rotating like this omega. Angular velocity omega. This end is angular velocity omega. So it will rotate like this. Okay, so it will rotate in a This is rotating. This rod is uh, rotating like this. Okay. Let me write like this. And this diamond uh, P. Okay. Let with an angular velocity omega. Let this reach at the point Q S. In a time interval. The end Q is to Q dash with an angular speed omega. We subtend an angular displacement alpha. Angular displacement alpha. Clear? Magnetic field perpendicular inward, rod PQ. The end Q is moving with an angular speed omega. Let an angular displacement alpha made by this end Q in, time, in a time interval. To reach from Q to Q dash. 
angular displacement is a alpha. Then what is q q days? R R is equal to what? If this is L, then R is equal to what? Radius into angle R. Formula is R. Think that this is a R. This R portion is equal to L alpha. L into alpha. Clear? This R is the uh, okay. So if the rod turns an angle alpha in a time t, then this is equal to q q dash is equal to l alpha. Then this area shift. What is this area? The area shift by the area shift by the rod. The area shift by the rod, right? Then. The area shift by the rod is by the rod A is equal to now think that this is a triangle line. This R is almost a straight line. So what is this R portion? L alpha. So this is the base and this is the height. Think that this is a height. Now what is this area? Triangle area half base is L into L alpha. So area is equal to half L square alpha. This is the area. Area shift by the rod in time t. If alpha is the angle subtend at O or at P in time t, then the arc is L alpha. The area shift by the rod is equal, is equal to half L square alpha. This is the area. Clear? Then what is the flux link with the flux link? With the the flux link with the with the the flux link with the phi is equal to b a cos theta b dot a b a cos theta what is b a cos theta what is theta here how much is the theta b is perpendicular inward and what is this area portion this is a close the area is always perpendicular to the plane. Area portion, this area portion, the area vector is perpendicular. It may be outward or inward. Glass function in the same direction, inward. So theta is equal to 0 degree. Theta is equal to 0 degree. So this flux is equal to BA. Then this flux is equal to B, what is A? Half L square alpha. Half L square alpha. Okay, then so half B L square alpha. Then go to the magnitude of the induced VMF. Magnitude of induced VMF. Magnitude of induced VMF. Magnitude of induced EMF E is equal to magnitude. Right? Number of tons M is 1, so we can write D5 by dt is equal to d5 by dt now put that e is equal to e is equal to d by dt what is five half b l square alpha half constant uniform magnetic field b constant uh, length of the rod is constant so all are constant so this is d alpha by dt Rate of change of alpha is what? Angular displacement. Alpha, angular displacement. Rate of change of angular alpha with respect to time. This is called what? The angular velocity dl square omega. So that is the formula. Half b l square omega. Clear? So this is about the formula for rotation of the rod. Motional EMF in a rod rotated in a magnetic field. So it means what? If the rod is rotating and EMF is induced in the rod, that EMF will give you a current. Means if you take a rod and if you rotate that in a magnetic field, if you take a rod and if you rotate this in a magnetic field, then a current is induced in the rod. A current is induced in the rod. And the direction is given by the Faraday's, uh, sorry, Fleming's, Right hand rule.
Okay, so this is about the emotional EMF. Okay, so this is about the discussions about how the flux can be changed and the flux changes the methods of changing induced current. Then another is that by changing the theta B A cos theta, flux can be changed by changing B strength of magnetic field. How you know that by changing the strength of magnetic field, how the flux changes? If the magnet moves towards the coil, flux increases, goes away, flux decreases, so that the galvanometer shows deflection, there is a current in the coil. Here, motional EMF is equal to B L B. Strength of magnetic field, length of the rod, with the what velocity it is moving, that is B L B. Then motional, then rotational is when it is rotating, a rod is rotating, the EMF induced is equal to half B L square omega. Because there is B, B is equal to what? Omega, here omega m is what? Omega into L, put that omega into L, and that is half of this one. So that is half B L square omega. Okay, then the other parts will be discussed in the next case. Okay.